Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I built my triple screw gear vise. Now before we get started, I want to say a huge thank you to John Heiss and Andy Klein for inspiration on making mine, as they themselves made awesome gear vices. I encourage you to go check them out, link in the description to their videos. Now, this vise has one, two, three screws. This third screw down here prevents any kind of racking of this vise. It has rubber lined jaws and it is about 30 inches wide and 20 inches tall. This will accommodate any board you throw at it and it is able to open up to about 16 inches width. So that being said, let's get to it. So this project begins over at my CNC machine where I'm gonna lay out a four by four foot sheet of one inch Baltic birch plywood. I've programmed the CNC to cut out the four body pieces of the vise two for the stationary jaw and two for the moving jaw. It'll also have holes in the corners for alignment during glue up and the other holes for the hexagonal nuts to go into the stationary jaw. Once the CNC had finished doing its thing, I could then use a chisel and a hammer to break all the tabs which were holding the four main body pieces in place. Next, I can sand the four body pieces front and back, getting rid of the fuzzies on the edges to 220 grit. Then over at the bandsaw, I chop up some small dowels, which will fit in those alignment holes in the corners of the main jaws. Then over at the belt sander, I can round those edges just to make things a little easier during glue up. I then slip these four posts into place and line up the pieces perfectly for what next I can drill out all the holes for the screws, which are gonna act as clamps during the glue up. The reason the four alignment pins are so critical is that one of the pieces of plywood has a through hexagonal shape and the other one has a half blind shape as the coupler knots will go through one piece and only halfway through the other and be a press fit. So these need to be perfectly aligned. A liberal amount of glue is now applied and spread out with an old credit card. Don't try to read the numbers on that as it's not actually a credit card. The reason I can use all these screws and not worry about outward appearance or anything like that is eventually the inside of this jaw is where these screws are will be covered with a rubber membrane. Now after I wipe off the excess glue, I can come back with my 3 quarter inch chisel and just kind of clean up all the edges of these hexagons, making sure there's no glue and crispening up the edges so I can now smack in the coupler nut. To protect the coupler nut, I just put a piece of wood on top and drive her home over one of the corners of my table. As you can see, the coupler nuts only go in about halfway and so far there's been no issue with strength of this joint. With the coupler nuts added, the rear jaw is finished, minus adding the rubber membrane later. Onto the front moving jaw, I can now install my alignment pins, drill all the holes required for clamping, and spread out some glue and drive in my screws and clamp it overnight. As you can see, the screw placement is a little bit different on this jaw, as it's only the outside and three specific points in the middle which I measured out, as we don't want the screws to get hit by the router when it's being carved out for the gears. Next over at my homemade CNC, I can drill six holes to clamp it down to the table. These are three inch screws and the hole location for these is the same hole location which I'm going to drill later to attach the Lexan to the front. As you can see, I chose my CNC to only cut out the perimeter and the inside shapes as I didn't really want to have the CNC running for hours on end hogging out every single speck of dust from this. I chose to simply pop out the inner circles and start chiseling out the outer shapes and removing this all by hand. I could then come back once this has cleared out the bulk of the material with my router and flush it all up to its final depth. This really saves the life of my bits and it was actually pretty quick and it was kind of a stress reliever to just kind of smack this all with the chisel anyways. As you can see, the CNC left a mark where I need to exactly drill my Forstner bit hole to make room for the nut which clamps the back of the vise in place. In order to avoid blowout on the back of this Forstner bit hole, I can then remove the clamp from the CNC table, flip it over, and drill it from the other side. This leaves a really crisp edge on the outside. Next back over at the CNC machine, I have a 3 quarter inch piece of Baltic birch plywood, which is going to be used to cut out the 7 gears for the internal movement of the vise. Now I did program in some tabs, but unfortunately my Z height was a little off here, and most of the gears freed up when cutting. I can then sand off the front and back of these gears, remove all the scrap, and then bring them over to the drum sander where I can sand the inside for a perfect snug fit for the bearing. 
Although the CNC left a very nice finish on the edge of the gear teeth, it's still worth it to hit it with a belt sander real quick. In order to seat the bearings on the inside of the moving jaw, I needed to create a cylinder with a little bit of a pocket in the inside that was the same diameter as the inner race. Then I could drive it home with a hammer and seat it fully. Now that the bearings are in place and the gears are cut, I can try a dry assembly to make sure they're functioning properly. Here's the problem. Look at the distance between here and here. What the fuck? So back over at the CNC, you can see we're recutting these gears as I think what happened during the original cut is the inside was cut out before the outside and as it was cutting the outside of the gears on the lead in and lead outs, it was kind of bashing into the side and losing steps because it couldn't do that cut all in one depth. And of course, with this happening, the problem compounds itself by the end of the seventh gear cut. Over at the belt sander, I can round off the sides of the nut which will match the quarter inch router bit for the inside of the gear which has the nut shape in it. There's three of these gears with nuts in them and they're gonna be in charge of driving the three lead screws in and out. As you can see, the dry assembly went way better this time. Next, I can cut up a six foot piece of one inch threaded rod into three more or less equal pieces. The bottom middle one being slightly shorter as it doesn't need a piece sticking out to grab into the two handles. In order for the gear to spin the nut and in turn spin the threaded rod, this will need to be through drilled through the nut into the threaded rod and then an aluminum nail will be used to pin it in place and then I will cut off the edges of that nail and center punch the inside to kind of spread out the edges and lock it permanently in place. Next I can countersink the six holes on this eighth inch piece of mild steel which I had cut locally at a laser cutting CNC place. They only charged me 20 bucks for these three pieces and I feel that was well worth it for this project. As you can see, this hugs the shaft of the threaded rod extremely well as there's only about 5 thousandths clearance around this, which makes for the slop in the end of the vise being very minimal. I also added some paste wax around the front and back of this as there's no way to get to this in the end after it's assembled. Next over at the drill press, I can do the exact same thing on the back of this plate making sure to give it a eighth of a turn backwards after tightening up so the plate is free to spin. Next I can have my super special helper apply some glue to some one inch Baltic birch plywood as I want to glue this up into a large rectangle and then bring it over to my table saw lathe and turn it down for use as the knuckle which will hold the handle of the vise on either side. Now that this is dried overnight, I can remove the clamps and mark out the center. Then I can clamp it to the side of my table and drill out the two different size holes One's for the screw that screws into the end to turn it on the table saw lathe, and one for the blank hole which holds it in place on the tailstock. So now I can go ahead and turn this on my homemade table saw lathe. This thing is awesome for making cylindrical objects real fast. If you're interested in this, you can go to my website diybuilds.ca and download a free set of plans, and there's also the availability to download the CAD model to go with this should you want to modify it in any way yourself. Once the piece is sanded to an appropriate 240 grit, I can bring it over to the chop saw and chop off the piece with the hole in it, and then chop off the two pieces to the appropriate length. Then over at the router table, I can put a quarter inch round over on the front of this to make it a little smoother to the touch, or in case I run into it with my leg. I then mark out the center of these two knuckle pieces, and using a one inch Forstner bit, drill out clearance for the one inch threaded rod. Then at the drill press, I can drill out a through hole through the threaded rod, through the knuckle, and into the other side slightly, this is going to be used for my locking screw, 
So this is going to translate the motion of the handle into the motion of the threaded rod. The knuckle is then removed and the inside of the threaded rod is widened to make room for the threads on the screw. Next, using a 1 and an 8 inch Forstner bit, I can drill a through hole to make room for the handle to go through. As you can see, a little bit of the back blew out, but that's nothing that a little bit of glue and clamping time can't fix. Then back over at the drill press, I can drill it out again from the other side. Next, it's back over to the table saw lathe to cut down a chunk of scrap maple into the two handles. This will show the true power of the table saw lathe as I do this in one solid pass. In order to make the stoppers that go on the end of the handles to make sure it doesn't slip through the hole in the knuckle, it's back over to the table saw lathe to cut down another scrap of maple. This time the cylinder will be about half an inch bigger than the handle itself. That way it can't fall through the hole and onto the ground. Now over at the chop saw, I can chop off the piece with the hole in it, and then the four equal pieces, which will be the four ends of the handles. Then over at the belt sander, I can lightly touch up all the edges. Next, I need to mark out the center of these holes to drill out for a screw, and I do this by attaching a 90 degree square to the table, and then using my speed square and finding the center by aligning the corner. Next, I find the center on both ends of the handle, drill a hole in the center, and this will be attached with a two inch screw through the end cap and into the handle. The other side will get the same treatment, but will be screwed in place once the knuckle is attached to the vise. After plugging the three holes in the fixed jaw with some batting, I can squeeze out an entire tube of polyurethane construction adhesive on both sides of the jaws, then apply a sheet of rubber mat which I got from Home Depot for about $3 a square foot. This is very smooth on one side and textured on the other. The smooth side I laid down against the polyurethane construction adhesive. Now this didn't work at all and it basically peeled up and didn't adhere to it even a little bit. So quickly I was able to scrape up the polyurethane before it completely dried and then was able to use some contact cement which I did some tests with and seemed to have the most adhesion when I first wiped it down with mineral spirits. 15 minutes later. Twenty minutes later. So as you can see, not much of the polyurethane construction adhesive stuck to the rubber at all, and I was able to scrape off and sand off the remainder of the construction adhesive from the wooden jaws. So I then wiped everything down with mineral spirits, the wood and the rubber, brushed on contact cement, and waited an appropriate amount of time for it to dry before applying. Fifteen minutes later. In order to reduce friction as much as possible, I filled all the coupler nuts with paste wax. This seemed to work pretty well. I lay down the fixed jaw and then the moving jaw on top of it. Then I screw in all the threaded rods which are attached to the plates which need to be attached to the moving jaw next. But in order to attach these plates, I need to make sure that there's the appropriate gap between the gears with the nuts on them and the gears just on the inside of that. So I temporarily attach these outside gears and inside gears making sure that the gears are free to spin with both of them engaged. Now with the gears aligned, I can remove them and using a self-centering bit, drill out the center for these six mounting holes on each plate and then drive in half inch screws to keep them in place. Next, I can permanently attach the nut gears, which are the three on the outside of the vise. These are just hammered in place and press fit. These things are not going anywhere. I can then install the three inside gears on the bearings, but the very center gear is not placed until all three posts are fully tightened. This ensures that all three posts are in the exact same position and there's no racking whatsoever. The jaws will be completely parallel. 
Now unfortunately I sanded the inside that contacts the bearing a little bit too much, so I needed to apply some super glue thinly to the inside and then a little bit around the top lip just to make sure these don't move. And because I don't want these gears rubbing on the back, I used some pan head screws as kind of spacers which I could then easily remove to kind of space them about an eighth of an inch off the back. The last gear to get glued in is the center gear, and again, the outsides need to be completely tightened before the inside gear can be permanently attached. Then I can micro adjust the outside as needed to allow the teeth to mesh properly. Next over at the table saw, I can cut to width a piece of plexiglass. I then mark out the location of the two handles and using a fly cutting drill bit, I cut out the exact size of the hole I need on either side for the two handles to fit through the plexiglass. I can then attach the plexiglass to the jaw itself using those holes which I used for mounting to the CNC earlier. With these two screws holding the plexiglass in place, I can now go ahead and drill the remaining holes which will hold the plexiglass down once everything is trimmed to size. I can then remove the two corner screws, the two knuckles, and attach the three screws on the inside as these won't interfere as I flush trim the polycarbonate down to size. Now I did learn through this that actually this router bit left a much better finish than even the table saw. Now that the plexiglass is cut to final size, I can go ahead and remove all the screws on the inside, peel off both sides layer of plastics, and clean out the inside for the final time, making sure to get inside all the bearings and behind the gears. I now flip the knuckle pieces upside down and squeeze some five minute epoxy into the end of each. I mix this with a little stick, place it on top, and then I can drive in the screw which locks these knuckles onto the threaded rod. After the epoxy is dried fully, I can run the handle through the knuckle and install the one end stop on each side. The vise at this point is now complete and all that's left is a little bit of preparation to mount this to the workbench. I first drill a through hole in the leg as I want this vise to butt up completely against the side. In order to make sure that this 50 pound monster vise doesn't move at all, I install the cross bracket along the bottom just to make sure that it's a little more secure than your average vise. The vise is then slipped into place through the one hole in the leg and then secured with several 3 inch screws along the top and several 3 inch screws along the bottom brace. The vise is now complete and ready for testing. Well, that's handy.